Early one morning, Harry was struggling to get some freight cars moved from a siding. They were needed for a mixed traffic train that Donald and Douglas were to take to Nantasket Junction. Come on! Come on! I'm gonna be late for my next job! He groaned. His wheels spun and spun. The reason why the cars weren't moving at all was because their brakes were set. But he didn't realize this and just kept on pulling and pulling. Come on! He groaned. I wish I was moving instead of standing still! Suddenly, the coupling between him and the first brake car broke, and Harry ran right into a siding, smashed through some buffers, and stopped halfway across an old tramp steamer. Luckily, no one was hurt, but Harry's front was badly bent. Skipper Stu and the Harbor Master came over to see if Harry was all right. Hmm. Well, the only major damage is bent buffers, said the Harbor Master. Oh, botheration, said Skipper Stu. Harry and Hamish were to collect the coastline flyer in an hour. Who can we get to take the train on such short notice? Luckily, Russ was close by and heard everything. I can take it, he called out. Are you sure, Russ? The Harbor Master called back. It's a tough train to pull. Of course, we've got to keep the trains to time, you know. Well, all right, but we've got to send Hamish to help out with the backlog while Harry's being mended. So you'll need to find another engine who can help you take the coastline flyer. Yes, ma'am, Russ tooted confidently. I can manage that. But as Russ got closer to Selgreb Bay Harbor, he remembered something he should have kept in mind before. The Coastline Flyer was an express goods train usually hauled by Harry and Hamish that stops at every harbor along the Seaside Railway, starting from Selgreb Bay, it goes on to Groflin, and then goes all the way down to Gardenia Bay at the end of the line. Russ was worried, but was sure that he could find someone at Selgreb Bay who'd be happy to lend a wheel just in case the train was too heavy for him to pull alone. Hmm, well, looks like I'll just have to ask the first engine I meet if they'll be able to help me, he decided as he pulled into the bustling dockyard. As he sorted out the containers for his train, he saw a little tank engine sitting on a siding, waiting for help. Hello there, he said. You've got an interesting crane arm. Where's your hook? I'm a reach stacker. I have clamps instead of hooks. That's intriguing. I've never met a reach stacker engine before. Oh, beg pardon for not introducing myself. I'm Stepney. And my name's Russ. I've got a big freight train to take to Gradinia Bay, but I'm not sure if I can do it on my own. I'd be more than willing to lend a buffer, said Stepney cheerfully. I'm catching a ferry there anyway. Great, honked Russ. We'd better hurry if we're to get the goods delivered on time. As the two shunted together the loads to hook up, Russ told him about his work in Groflin and the many different engines he worked with, while Stepney told him about his time in Cortunia, in which he'd been visiting to be part of a great locomotive show at Selgreb City Sheds, and now had to return to his home in England, the Blue Bell Railway. Russ and Stepney decided to take the train in two halves. Russ would haul the containers, and Stepney would haul the other loads, tankers, fish, stone, produce, and products from the factories around the city. When all was shunted and ready, the two set off down the seaside railway with their important train. Unfortunately, they didn't get very far, as the first stretch to get out of the harbor was uphill. They tugged and pulled, but no matter what, the engines couldn't get their trains up the slope. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Russ. This train seems to be a bit tougher to hole up than I thought. You're right, sighed Russ. The coastline flyer is too heavy for both of us to pull separately, and if we leave later, we won't have time to uncouple each of the cars for the docks. Then, as if by magic, both engines came up with the same idea. They decided to arrange each of their trains into two new halves. Cars for Groblin were coupled to Stepney, and cars for Gardenia Bay were coupled to Russ. Both brake vans were coupled together, then Stepney with his train, and then Russ and his train. With an engine hauling at the front, and an engine to haul from the middle, the two could get up the hill and on their way down the line. 
The rearranged train also made it easier to drop off and pick up cargo at the two stops. Stepney's cars were uncoupled, and new cars of steel, fish, and lumber were coupled off. They made it to the docks just in time. Well, it was a pleasure to work with you today, Stepney. It's a pity you have to go home now. Likewise, Russ. But I'm glad your crew have such a good friend. Keep everything in order back home, and who knows? Maybe I'll visit here again. Goodbye, Russ, and Godspeed. Russ then rolled home, confident, ready for bed, and glad he had found himself a new friend. distance I can see a world that is for everyone I can hear a dawning that is just begun and everywhere I go I see creatures that are big and small all within the curve of the world Mike was cross. The thin controller had assigned him to ballast duties for being naughty, and Mike hated being stuck at the mines all day. He found it rather boring. One morning, Mike arrived at Chipperton Wharf with a loaded train of ballast. He saw Duncan, who was getting his train loaded. Morning, Mike. What's up? I feel overworked. That's what's up, huffed Mike. I've been going up and down the line all day, stuck with the ballast trains and all because I burst a safety valve and started an elderly woman. Duncan pondered for a moment. You know, if I was on your wheels, I would have probably taken a break up on the coast at Birmingham. You know, have the ocean breeze in your face. Your line does run up there after all. And with that, Duncan set off for the quarry. 
This gave Mike an idea. All that week, Mike tried everything to sneak off to Burn River. He tried to sneak ballast cars and lumber cars out as a construction delivery. He tried to run off light engine on his own, and even begged the yard manager to let him go there. At last, he finally got a job on the resort end of the line, but not the one he had hoped for. An express train needs to be arranged at the Swahili Water Park Resort for a group of tourists. I need you to bring them some couches, so they have enough for the train to carry them. Yes, sir, said Mike, but he had a plan. Mike knew of one carriage that had a faulty coupler pin on it, so he coupled that to the front of his train. As he trundled out with five heavy covered carriages, he felt the pin push against him as he went downhill. Not yet, he said. We've got to wait until we reach the resort. As he approached the resort station, Scott the Express Tank Engine was waiting for Mike's extra coaches. As he pulled into the platform, he put his plan into motion. With the pin loosened enough, left on the platform were the carriages for the train, and off went Mike. What the? said Scott. Slow down, Mike, said his driver. We just passed by the station. But Mike wasn't listening. He was bolting it to the Bermuda coast. Stations and shunting yards flashed by as his driver fought for control of the regulator. At the big station in Bermuda, there were a pair of buffers on the other side of the turntable, just at the tail end of the shunting yards. Mike was still not paying any attention until he saw the buffers. Then everything happened at once. Mike found himself standing on the sand instead of the rails with the remains of the buffers behind him. Don't worry, Mike, called out his driver. I'll go phone for help. Mike sighed. There had been a break, but not the one he had hoped for. Back at the Swahili Water Park Resort, Scott was still confused about what had happened as he backed down onto his coaches. Suddenly, he heard a blast of whistles and the clattering of equipment as Rashira and Grace the Crane roared past. Clear the tracks! shouted Rashira. Derailed engine at Barmabar Beach! Oh, mind your speed! called Grace. My gears are rattling! As Mike was lifted back onto the rails by Rashira and Grace, he saw that Rex and Bert were also there. They'd come to help repair the tracks and buffers beyond the turntable. Well, Mike, you said you wanted a break from all the work you've been getting. <laughs> but we never thought you would have it this way finished Bert. Well, if I must admit, it was all right, said Mike. But I didn't think the only break that happened would be to a pair of buffers. The three engines laughed in agreement.
Welcome to Crotunian Shoots, the program in which we see the railways of Crotunia in all of its raw wonder. For today's journey, we'll be taking you through the beautiful junction of Great Wolf Forest. Casey Jr. is a small tender engine who works mixed traffic services on the railways of Crotunia. He's a smart little engine who knows his way around the railway after working on it for many years. Oh, oh, oh no! Though he is prone to getting into a few scrapes every now and then. One day, he was delivering a train of fuel and coal to the Crotunian yards of the Dreamfleet Railway Company, one of the many railway companies that worked the country's railways. Big Old Rusty, Dreamfleet's oldest steam engine, was arriving with a load of empties. He had just delivered a load of slates from the quarry all the way up to the docks in Gradinia Bay. Hey there, C. Junior. How's things? Pretty good. Just brought over some stuff for your fuel tanks and coal hoppers. Ah, oh, now that's a relief. You came right in time. We're just a quarter hopper away from being empty. Good to hear then. Say, where's Tracy? Tracy, the little shunting engine that worked the yards, who was usually upbeat and cheery, wasn't feeling very well. She'd overworked herself in the hot sun, and as a result, had overheated her boiler, which was electrically heated instead of using coal or wood to burn. Oh, sorry, Tracy, but you'll have to go to the works in Colville for repairs. We just can't let you risk your boiler burst and work with all those cars and coaches. But, sir, who's going to take my mail train? The villagers need to get their packages and letters delivered on schedule. K. 
Casey Jr. rolled up to the workman and Tracy. He had an idea. Hey, sir. What if I uh, took Tracy's mail train tonight? You, Casey Jr.? Are you sure? Sure as sure can be, sir. I just have a goods train to take to the docks at Groflin, so I can work her train later tonight. Okay, if you're sure. I'll let the mail depot supervisor and Miss Ella know. Workman called Miss Ella about the plan, which she approved, and the same went for the manager of the mail depot. Casey Jr. took his cars to the harbor and headed back to the sheds for a power nap. Nighttime can be very busy for the few engines who have jobs throughout the night. There's passengers to take home past the station in Norfolk and freight to go to the factories, towns, and big ships at the harbor. The busiest type of train at night in Protunia is the mail train. These trains take special coaches and wagons called mail cars, where the mail is loaded on and sorted en route to their destinations, sometimes traveling by air or road. Casey Jr. was soon at the mail depot, where his wagons and loaded packages were waiting. Edward was also there, helping Johnny with the mainline mail trains. Evening, Casey. Evening, Edward. How's things? Not bad. Mainline traffic's been the same for me. I take it you're taking over for Tracy. Yep, I'm taking her mail cars all the way down to... Um, where exactly am I taking the mail wagons? I figured you'd ask that. You're to take all the mail from here to Cliffstone Junction. Take care of the mail on the Mountain Branch lines, and drop off your train at Gardenia Bay Station to let the other postal vehicles and the Pinewood Island mail engines complete the last little bit of work. Sure thing! Drop off to Cliffstone Junction. Mail for the Mountain Branch, final stop at... The Mountains?! Uh, you sure that's the right place to take them because the branch lines have really narrow lanes and really huge cliffs and are really high up in the river? Calm down, Casey. You're not frightened of the mountains, are you? Oh, of course not. I go on them all the time. It's the branch lines I'm worried about. Those rickety rails and tight cliffs make me nervous without a clear view. Well, imagine it's like the main line, and it should be better. Goodbye, Casey Jr. Good luck. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you. Men moved quickly to ship the parcels, packages, and letters into Casey Jr.'s mail wagons. They were larger than Tracy's usual wagons, so they could fit a little more into them. Finally, the cars were loaded, and Casey Jr. was on his way. Casey Jr. slowly made his way up the line, a little worried about what would come later on. He soon made his first stop at Cliffstone Junction. Porters and workmen hurried to load and unload the mail for the towns near the stations and beyond the station. Then they set off for the first loop line, which ran from the junction, through the mountain, and up to the town of Rotoslopia. Casey Jr. soon made it to the first big slope. The track was rather steep, and there was little elbow room in the cliffs that surrounded it. It was tough to roll up the mountain at first, but Casey Jr. wasn't willing to give up just yet. Alright, give it everything we've got. Let's go. I think. I think. Come on, come on, let's go. Come on. I know. At last, after much pulling and much straining, he was finally at the top of the hill. Run! Woo! Casey Jr. felt much more confident. He didn't feel like slowing down now, imagining himself along the main line as Edward suggested. If only at the worst possible time. Casey, slow down! You're headed straight for me! Oh, oh. Yeah! Who? What happened to you, Glazy Junior? 
sorry, Pete. I didn't know you were coming down the hill. I was going down so fast. It was, it was hard to see you at the bottom. Hmm. First time out with a late night mail run, eh? Well, I can't say it was perfect on my first night run, but I did learn a thing or two from my mistakes. You can't be too confident or too underconfident about working in a new way or with a new job. You just have to go in there and do your best, no matter what. That's what I've learned, at least. <sighs> Thanks, Pete. You're welcome, C. <sighs> Junior. Right, then. time to get going. Pete! Pete! <laughs> Where's that crate going? Oi! What crate? Oh, uh, the one on your uh, last flatbed. I still don't know what you're rattling rivets! That crate's supposed to be at the docks! It's a specially ordered load of paving stones for a customer in the UK! The ship's leaving at sunrise! Let me take it for you. I'm on my way to the docks anyway. Oh, thank you, Goisy Jr. You're a real saint. Soon, Casey Jr.'s conductor loaded the crate onto his first mail coach, and quickly Casey Jr. puffed away to finish up the mail run. The docks the crate was heading to was at Gradinia Bay, at the very end of the Crotunian mainline. He knew he had a lot more stops to do, so he put on full steam and got to work as fast as his wheels could let him. He wasted no time getting his other work done. There was some for the manager of Cliffstone Center Quarry, where Speedy, Bill, and Ben worked. A little bit for the manager of the logging camps. A little bit for Rotoslopia Junction. A little bit for the steelworks in Bluesburg. A little bit for Boston. A bit for the search and rescue team. A little bit for his home in Colville Junction. Until at last, he was at Gradinia Bay Junction. The yards were already booming when he got there, and the Pinewood Island Mail Train and Johnny were waiting for him, ready to depart. Hey, C. Junior. Where are you heading to? Delivery for the dock. Back in a bit. Okay, see you later. And after everything was done, Casey Jr. brought the crate over to the docks ready for shipping. He caught it in good time, too. The ship was completing its final loading procedures, and the crane wasted no time getting it on board. Later that morning, Sir Alan Featherington, head of operations on the railways of Crotunia, sent a message for Big Tim to deliver to Casey Jr. Hey, Casey! Got a message from Sir Alan. You seemed to do a good thing last night. Bringing that special delivery back to the docks for Pete and sticking to your mail schedule on record time. Uh, so much so, he's taking you with him to an important trip to Boston for the weekend. He'll book you tours, a shed, and everything. Isn't that exciting? Uh, Casey, you doing okay, buddy? But he didn't get an answer. He was so tired from all the rushing around, that he'd fallen fast asleep. Somebody get this freaking duck away from me! You can have a steam train If you just lay down your tracks Hiya Pacey, how's it going? Oh, it's going pretty well, TJ. I'm hoping to get my work done as soon as I can so I have time to get ready to see the new action chugger movie. Oh, you mean Golden Window? Yep! I'm going to see it tonight at the chugging! Or is it the... Or is it the chuffin? The, the chugging chuff to the, 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 the outdoor theater. Oh yeah, we saw that movie last night, didn't we, TJ? Yeah, you're gonna love it. Well, please don't give anything away. I've been trying to avoid spoilers all week. Well, it's an awesome movie. There's this bit where he goes into space and Stop! 
this is a spoiler free zone! Well, you at least want to know about the cameos? Flying Scotsman turns up at one point and- Thanks, but no thanks. I'd rather see it for myself. And then he gets out this giant sword and- Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! And there's this bit where- La 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 la! I'm not listening! La 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 la! Okay, okay, we'll stop now. You promise? Yep. Phew. Oh, and at the end, he wins a big game against the alien, saves all the cartoon characters, and decides to retire from baseball to restart his basketball career. No! Wait, isn't that just the ending to Space Jam? Gotcha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you oh, see, we're look just your messing face. with you, Pacey. You know I would never do that to you. I'm just not that type of engine. Yeah, and you know, I would never do that to you because I don't want to know what the Fat Controller would do to me in return. He's still holding my favorite video game hostage. <laughs> oh, well, I'm just glad I'm mostly still in the dark about this movie. Well, we still got to deliver these tankers. Later, Pacey. <laughs> Yeah, bye, Percy. Oh, and don't forget to buy my audiobook. You mean the one that's just 20 minutes of you going through your made-up words? Hey, Count Longardo's Drunk Batty and Jerkshinary Foam My Own Words is gonna win an award at some point. I just know it. It also helps that I have the cheat bribing the committee. Bye! Goodbye! Ha! Huh, good. Only another two hours, and I'll make my way to the theater. I can't wait to see Golden Window. Oh, that's a great movie. Especially the part at the end where Action Juggle finds out his father's still alive. No! Welcome to Crotunian Shoots, the program in which we see the railways of Crotunia in all of its raw wonder. Today, we're off to visit the Selgrib City Freight Depot and Carriage Yards.
day, the harbor down at Gardenia Bay was very busy. Lots of ships were sailing in and out of the docks, and there was a big shipment from Europe coming in shortly. The engines working the docks were rushed off their wheels as the cranes loaded cargo onto their flatbeds and freight cars. Where are these headed out again, dear? Zellgrub City Freight Yard for the gas and refrigerator containers. The rest go to the docks in Zellgrub Harbor. Understood. <coughs> How much more coal does this blasted ship need? About six more wagons. They're parked by the supplier's yard. The ship just radioed in to say it's coming into the coast. I'm going out to bring it in. I'll fix the other tons to help. Thanks, Tenzin. It soon became apparent that other engines were needed at the docks, since there was too much for the harbor yard engines to do on their own. Morning, Pepper Pete. Hi, Edward. Oh, uh, morning, Lazy. It's Tracy, Pete. Tracy. Oh, as I said, did not. Anyway, what are you off to this morning? Some mail got misdelivered? Nope. I'm heading off to the docks. The docks? That's a busy place for you to work at. Yeah, but I've worked there before, so I can take care of myself there. Hope it all goes well, then. Good luck, youngster. Just mind the bigger work you're given. I will. Tracy made record time getting to the harbor. She couldn't wait to start work by the beautiful seaside. When she got there, Ten Cents and some other tugs had managed to get the ship into the port. It was huge, heavily loaded with goods, and ready for unloading and reloading. Tracy was rushing towards Emma and the ship, ready to double check what her jobs were, when... Hey! Watch where you're going, you dinky little engine! Important engines with more important freight coming through. Oh no, not Cerberus and Diesel 10. What are they doing here? They've come to help out with the heavy goods. What? Them? Why couldn't you get someone like the haulers at the Groffin docks? They're really busy too. We didn't have a lot of engines free today with all the deliveries coming in. So we've had to work with all we've got. Well, I suppose that's understandable. So, what do you want me to do today? Shunting big trains on the main dock again? <laughs> Sorry, Tracy. Not this time. I need you to help Trix and Skip at the supplier's yard. They've got a lot of deliveries and materials to get out, so they need someone to help sort out the trains. Okay. Um, who's Trix and Skip? You'll find out. They're a nice couple of machines. Emma was right. Trix and Skip are as nice as they are hardworking. Trix the forklift zips about the yard loading cargo for the trains and trucks that come to the dock, while Skip takes garbage from the building sites and yards down to the dump. Whenever he's paying attention, that is. Rattling rods! Look at all this stuff! Oh, you must be Trix and Skip! We certainly are! And you've got to be... Oh. Ouch! Tracy! <laughs> Indeed I am. So, what do I have to shift? Oh, well, for a start, you can shove those bricks and lumber together. They're going up to Prillum for the new townhouses. And then you can get those empties to Cranky so he can load up the special stucco stuff that just arrived for the mainland. I'm on it. I'll get it done in no time. Ugh. Flat. Down by the docks. That's the place to be. Down by the docks. The gateway to the sea. Down by the docks are we are the team. Working together, just like family. Down by the docks, you're never on your own. Down by the docks, it's really home from home. Down by the dockside, down by the dockside. Down by the dockside, it's where we want to be. It's where we want to be. Later that afternoon,
afternoon, Diesel tenant servers were just heading out to the Gradinia Bay Goods Depot with a long line of cars when Diesel crossly rolled alongside. And where do you think you two are going? Another load of crummy wagons. What's so bad about that? We've got a load coming in from on those narrow gauges at the junction, and one of you has to take it. Ugh, don't see why it has to be us. We've been hauling all morning. I know someone who would. Hey, Diesel! What's that? Doc Master Noisy just said you've got a special to pick up from the junction. Really? A special? Oh yes, some goats from the hills going down here. They need those wagons urgently. Wow, that's something for a little engine like me. Tracy, are you sure we should do that? And from orders of Devious Diesel? Hurry, ten cents! Can I delivery from the junction here yet? Not yet, Doc Master. Should be here soon though. Well, what do you... Oh no! Tracy had wasted no time getting to the junction. The cars were already waiting for her, freshly loaded up with heavy goods. I got these buffers buffed. Now Tracy was not inexperienced at pulling goods trains, but she'd never really hauled goods trains this heavy before. And usually the goods trains were kept to the flatter parts of the railway. And she was finding out very quickly that they were a lot harder to control than she thought. Are you guys sure she's pulled a heavy goods before? Cause it's not looking like that to me. Yeah, I'm getting vibes she's an amateur. My bluffer feels like a cut of Swatch, got it. What a lot of love! Why is she getting her the right away? We got the right away! Good grief! Hey, like, guys, I got an idea, so hear me out. Why don't we, like, put you down the big hill a little bit? You know, not like in a mean way, just kind of like, you know, hey, teach you for next time kind of way. Not supposed to be hot or anything. Do you really want to do this right now? I mean, if it makes you guys happy, I'm having a fun ride back here. You know what, Joe? I don't always agree with you, but let's do this. Everyone in favor, clank. Good. Let's do it. We'll talk about good timing, because here it comes now. So is this going to be, like, an easy push on now? Because I'm not sure what the plan is. Right, only about a mile more, and we'll be. Uh, what the? Uh, uh, come on, slow, slow down. I don't uh, think so. <laughs> Tracy tried to apply her brakes, but it was too late. The cars are pushing her faster and faster down the line, and not even the brake van could help. Tracy and her cars were sent speeding along through the docks and down the line towards the old wooden pier. So, Joe, did you forget about the giant pin we're about to crash off of? I didn't know it was there. I thought we were going to lose it. That was just something funny. Oh, oh, Luckily, Tencent had been docking a sand barge near the pier and had set it up to make a makeshift arrestor bed when he saw her coming down. Oh, oh. Thanks, ten cents. I owe you one. No problem, mate. I'll go and fetch a crane. Then you can get some of that sand out of your valves. Because the tide was too low to lift her out, Tracy had to sit in the barge for some time. A little bit happened while she waited. Cars were delivered. Engines were found out and punished. And ships shouted, ANCHORS AWAY! But even as Bonavista finally arrived to lift her out of the barge, Tracy still felt ashamed for causing an accident by jumping into a situation she wasn't prepared for. As the workmen got ready to lift Tracy out from the barge, Emma, Trick, Skip, and Luke all came to help out any way they could. Engine secured! Bring her up, boys! Now don't be hard on yourself, kid. It wasn't all your fault. Those three were looking for an easy way out of a situation, and you got tricked into it. From what I heard from these two, you were a big help. Yeah, you were a huge help getting all the deliveries out today. Even if you got a little sandy. Thanks, guys. And I learned something else, too. Well, well what's, what's that? that? Ten cents to trap for the baseball team with his catching skills.
your express runs again? You bet. And off to the loading dock, I assume? Yeah, and we gotta get going, Michelle. The boat's probably waited ages for us. All right, all right, cool your pistons, Grace. We'll get it done in twice the time any old crane can. Well, good luck, you two. Oh, and uh, mind the... Ew. Ew. Oh, what is that smell? Oh. Pong. about here is. I mean, it's a little bit stinky, but stiff as in above is it a real pong. It's like two tons of old boiler sludge mixed with one ton of engine ash and two wagons of stinky cheese all boiled together in an oven. I'm telling you, it's the worst smell I've smelled since the holy hydraulics. Look out below. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I'm so sorry. I wasn't paying attention and I bungled it up. No worries. At least it solved that fishy situation. <laughs> Boy, you two. You got my load of salmon to take to the Bird Member Station Cafe. Welcome to Crotunian Shoots, the program in which we see the railways of Crotunia in all of its raw wonder. Mind the gap, we're about to visit the busy town of Faustin and its freight and passenger stations. Welcome to Crotunian Shoots, the program in which we see the railways of Crotunia in all of its raw wonder. Get your finest climbing gear, because today we'll be exploring the workings of the Cliffstone Mountains. Thank <laughs> you. 
Skipper Stew is a very officious engine. Being the Dockmaster's diesel of Groflin Harbour, he always works to make sure the docks are tick-tock and on the clock. Unfortunately, this attitude does have a tendency to cause some, uh, problems. One night, as the seaside locomotives were cooling their fireboxes and engines, Skipper Stew was rolling into the roundhouse. The engines were surprised. What are you doing here tonight, Skip? asked Oliver. Passenger detail. The Seaside Rail Co. scheduled a test run for our new express passenger service for tomorrow, but the new engine she bought hasn't arrived yet, so I, of all engines, am to take the train tomorrow. That sounds lovely, said Emma. Not when you're the Dockmaster's Diesel. I feel like I should stay here and keep things running. But we all help to do that, said Jones the Steam even whilst we have engines out of action. Like how I'm taking care of the containers while the Russ is on holiday, said Gripper the Crane. Suppose you've got a point, said Skipper Stew. In that case, I'll keep this passenger run on the clock. And with that, he went straight to sleep. Next morning, however, showed that not everything would be on the clock. Skipper Stew, keeping in proper Navy fashion, woke himself up well before dawn. Unfortunately, the ship was still far out at sea by the time he got there. Trains came in and out of the terminal, and buses putt-putted in and out for a good hour while he was waiting. At last, the big cruise ship carrying his passengers finally arrived and quickly boarded his coaches. Stu's train would only stop at the harbour stations, so the coaches were special for the long trip. There was a brake coach, a luggage van, a sleeper, a diner and a lounge, all coupled together for the long journey. At last, everyone was on board and Skipper Stu was ready to go. Tick tock, we're on the clock, off we go lads, he called out, but the coaches weren't ready. The conductor's not ready, the conductor's not ready, they called out, but it was no use. Skipper Stew was moving, had he not been flagged down, he would have left the luggage van and the brake coach behind. Skipper Stew felt very embarrassed. All the way to their first stop in Groflin, it seemed like nothing went right. Because they were late, they were switched off on a loop siding to let Yamon hurry past with some freight cars. Then, he ran into trouble with Donald at the salt mines. And to make things worse, the inclines proved very troublesome for Skipper Stew, causing the coaches to rock about and give the passengers an unpleasant experience. Passengers trying to sleep were given an unwanted massage. Hot cakes and bagels flew across the diner and passengers trying to take pictures were given blurry results. At last, they made it to their first stop. The grumbling passengers boarding the mainline connections and ferry boats at the dock got off, and some new passengers got in. Harry and Hamish, the express freight diesels, were surprised to see their boss worn out and stressed. Oh, how do engines manage this? I've run this train to time, and I've run into nothing but trouble. Well, we're not experts on the matter, said Harry. But passenger trains aren't like freight, said Hamish. They're right, you know, said a voice. It was Olwyn, who'd been hauling Isabel and Dulcie while Oliver was working at the salt mines. Passengers are not meant to be treated like soldiers, and coaches aren't meant to be treated like cars. You need to be gentle, smooth, and above all, relaxed. So, don't order them on board? Correct. And don't rock them about? Correct. Just be relaxed and keep steady. Just then, the conductor blew his whistle. All aboard! He called out as Skipper Stew tooted to say, All clear! And now, knowing that the passengers and luggage were safely aboard, he started off. The ride up to Brudinia Bay was much smoother. Skipper Stew didn't run into any loop sightings or jerk about on inclines. He just hauled his way up quickly but steadily. The passengers could sleep comfortably in the sleeper. The diners could enjoy their lunches of hot hamburgers, sandwiches, wraps and soft drinks. And sightseers could 
to take in the beauty of the Crotonian coast. And when they arrived at the harbour, Skipper Stu waited patiently for the passengers to reboard his coaches. Then, they all travelled down the same route home, stopping at each stop without fail. Finally, he made his last stop late into the night. His passengers boarded the final cruise ship bound for the mainland, and the express coaches were shunted away to the yards. Well done, said Dockmaster Eric. I heard you improved a great deal after what happened this morning, and the express has been a great success. Therefore, I am proud to say... Thank you, good Eric, interrupted Stu. But I do have my Dockmaster's duties to fill. Oh, I wasn't going to have you take over. Then, what were you going to say? But I must stop here, I'm afraid, or I'm going to spoil the next story. <laughs> In the buzzing country of Crotonia, there's all kinds of machines that help to keep things running on time, each one having their own special jobs to do. But every now and then, you need a really friendly machine to help out on the waterways. And that's when you call on Theodore, the world's friendliest tugboat. Theodore is a medium-sized tug. He's much bigger than 10 cents in Sunshine, but he isn't quite as big and strong as Warrior. Theodore is a harbor tug, meaning his work mainly keeps him inside the busy docks, such as bringing in ships or pulling barges of cargo. While Theodore dreams to go explore the ocean more someday, he's always got a positive outlook on things and is polite and kind to everyone that's welcomed in the harbor. This friendly tugboat is one mighty machine. Welcome to Crotonia, Theodore.
mighty machines Working for you, doing mighty things there Mighty machines Lifting and pulling and flying so high Building a building up to the sky You can watch them all day and never know why they're Mighty machines Hear them roar, watch them soar Sit right down and see There are stories to enjoy For every girl and boy Mighty machines Big and mighty machines Working for you, doing mighty things Mighty machines 